Hello guys, it's Martin here with update number three for my Azigawa Orca Typhoon Mark 1B. Uh, I want to show you the progress I've done since the second update and uh, so you can see how far I've progressed. Anyway, let's uh, start. So the last time I showed you I'd got up to the pre-shading stage, I'd, uh, I'd uh, primed and pre-shaded and uh, it was all ready to start painting so let's take a look here she is I uh, the first of all what I did was I masked the uh, underside to leave the white band width available and then I airbrushed the white and then after I finished airbrushing the white and that dried I then taped off some white stripes and left these areas um, and then sprayed the black stripes. I used um, Tamiya um, for the white, I used a Tamiya XF2, uh, thinned it down with isopropyl alcohol. Um, I can see panel lines, I don't know whether they're showing through the pre-shading, does show through, I don't know whether you can see it, it's weird. I take pictures and sometimes I can see the uh, shading, sometimes I can't, it depends on the light. Anyway, so after I did the stripes and that dried, I then masked off the stripe areas and I sprayed the underside grey. And for that I used the Tamiya XF83, it's a medium C grey RAF. And I, again, I tone that down with some isopropyl alcohol, the 91%, and uh, I, uh, I also put some white in that. I toned it down with some XF82. Um, I used about 20% XF82 white to the grey, and then about 30% of the isopropyl. 30 to 40 percent because the Tamiya paints are reasonably thin as they are. Um, and then after that, I turned over, masked the underside, and then I masked all the areas that are green so I could spray the grey. And for the grey, I used the XF82 Tamiya and I toned that down with white because it looked pretty dark when it was on. It's funny how they look like when, you, when you've got them out and you test them and then they get dark when they dry. So I toned it down with um, about 35% of the uh, Tamiya XF2 white. And again, I used around 35-40% of the uh, thinner. Then after that a dry, I then masked those gray areas and I sprayed on the um, RF dark green and for that I used the XF81 again I toned that down and I toned that down about 30% with white and, uh, and about 35-40% of the isopropyl alcohol to thin it and then I put my uh, foot, foot walk my, marks on the black where the engineers and the pilots walk before they get into the aircraft or into the engine bays um, and the propeller was painted right at the beginning I've just put that on for show and then I also painted inside it I used interior green for the inside of the frame and then I used Tamiya X11 silver chrome silver for the lights Landing light, and then there's a red light under here. There's going to be a piece of uh, clear plastic fits in there, and then we have the port side light that I have to put in on that wing, and the starboard side on there. So that's where I'm at for now. I think she's looking nice. It's going to look better when it's got the panel line details highlighted and some weathering. Um, I've enjoyed building it. It's been a great kit so far. Oh, I also put the exhaust in. Um, 
there and there, as you can see. So yeah, it's a great kit. I highly recommend it. The only problems you get is these cockpit detail, you know, these three panels. When you put them in, you will find you've got to smooth that down a lot. And then I rescribed rescri a lot of the panel lines around here that are lost and the rivet detail while I was smoothing all those joints down. So I've got all those rivet details back that are lost and these panel lines around the side are rescribed. Bring them out a bit more. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm just going to show you how I mask. So it's just a quick, for anyone out there who probably doesn't do this, young, for the younger guys that might not be aware of this, what I usually do is I take the instruction painting guide booklet and I measure the width of the wings and I measure the width of the wings on the aircraft. You, obviously it's a bigger scale on the aircraft. So I divide the width of the actual aircraft wings by the width of that and um, I get a factor then, a scale factor, which in this case for the wing, for the uh, plan view, what you see there, it was 1.66 and I wrote that just there. And then I did the same for that, the scale on here is larger than the plan view. So I measure the length of the aircraft, I know the length of the actual model, and again I divide the length of the actual model by the length of this painting guide and I came up with 1.25 scale factor so then what I do put this on my scanner and I blow it up by 1.25 and then print it off and there you go there's the one that's magnified by 1.25 you can see it's bigger and that's the actual size of the aircraft when it's on there. And again, there's the plan view showing the width for the plane. As you can see it's a lot bigger, 1.66 time. But if you uh, take the aircraft, let me take these out, you can see that it's, you lay it over there to check it and it's perfect. So then you've created some paper mass for yourself. Then what I do is I simply pair of scissors and I just cut around the camouflage scheme. There's a round all there, so I'm just going to guess that it was that. You won't. It doesn't matter there because the round is going to cover it. So then I cut that out. I leave a small area and then you can fold that under the wing. So what I've got there now, as you see, I then put that on the plane. And there's the mask for that area there. You can use the detail, the lines to match up with the panel lines on the plane and these edges to make sure that they um, line up. So I create a mask. So then I do that all over, spray one colour, take them off, and then the pieces that you've cut out, so when I've cut the grey out there, this green piece, just put it to a side because you're going to use that again. But when I use that and I lay it on, I'll generally just cut round the edges again and take about half a millimetre, one millimetre away, so it lays inside nicely and you can see where the grey is you can judge where you've got to position it nicely without stepping over the grey and then getting areas that don't receive the green. Um, so it works well for me. It gets a bit fiddly when you're going around the curvature of the fuselage, but patience is worth it because it comes off nice. You get a nice um, mast plane. And uh, the way I stick it on there is I just get my Tamiya tape, take some tape off, I can see through here that I've got a certain length, rip a bit off, and then I'll I'll rub it down on the um, table. I want to take some of that adhesive off because uh, I get nervous about paint peeling with masking tape, so take some of the adhesion off first. 
and then fold it like that so it's now become dual sided tape I'd stick it on there and then I'd stick another piece around there and then I'm just going to apply that like that so there's one mask applied it's simple it's quick and it also because it's raised slightly you get a nice feathered edge when you airbrush um, around the mask you don't get a hard demarcation line and I like that slight feathered look so that's my method for masking I don't know whether anyone else does that I'm sure a lot of modelers do it the, um, and you can buy masks aftermarket masks to apply but why why spend money on masks when you can just blow up if you've got a photocopy scanner you can just create your own mask as simple as that so that's where I'm at next stage is after this video I'm going to take it to the spray booth and I'm going to be um, applying a gloss coat and um, when that gloss coat's dried I'll be applying all the decals and then I'll start doing some weathering and I'll also put the stripe around there I'm still still wondering whether I'm going to cut out these decals and use them as masks and spray airbrush the masks on through through these uh, stencils that I create by cutting those out because they are dark or whether I just apply these decals and tone them down with some sky uh, for the spinner I use the Umbro 90 beige green uh, with a little bit of white tone it down a bit um, and that looks more like the colour on photographs of actual aircraft I've seen rather than the very light almost white coloured sky um, ok I'm done that's me for the day all updated next update won't be an update it'll be the final reveal decaled weathered um, and uh, all the final assembly pieces the wheel assemblies in place and the cockpit all in place so that's it thanks for watching guys happy modeling and uh, see you soon take care tallyo chocks away